Hi, this is Stephanie Stock with Ohio Advocates for Medical Freedom. Today we are with Nino Vitale, representative from District 85. OAMF became aware of him about two years ago um, when we discovered from one of his constituents that he had actually suffered a vaccine injury in his own family. Um, we asked him to come speak at a vaccine injury awareness event in Columbus, and he graciously came to speak about medical freedom and parental rights. Um, <clears throat> Is there any one experience or one moment in time where you came to know that you wanted to go into politics? Hmm. Uh, wow. Well, no, I'm a business guy. i uh, been in the business world my whole life. I had a few people kind of contact me in the same week and say, hey, our state rep is uh, term limited. And I went home and told my wife, hey, you wouldn't believe this, but three people kind of said I should consider running. And she said, yeah, I know I knew that would happen. So uh, let's go to work. And I was like, okay. So that was it. Oh, awesome. Um, when your spouse is behind you on something, it really makes a difference. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, can you touch briefly on your campaign platform and what you plan to do if elected again? Uh, wow. Uh, okay. Generally, my platform has always been the same uh, in the past two terms that I've run, and now this is the third term, which is um, freedom and liberty. I think the, Patrick Henry said the direct end of government is liberty. And generally speaking, uh, I think there is a use for government, but I, should, I think it should be as limited and local as possible. And I think the stronger our families are, uh, especially with someone who's had five boys and I have had four foster kids in my home, that um, when you learn how to share, how to get along, those sorts of things in the home, you are much more likely to participate properly in society and much less likely to do things you shouldn't do. So uh, less intrusion on our freedom and less intrusion on our paychecks. Awesome. Sounds, sounds a little bit libertarian leaning there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, you've sponsored some bills. Did you want to uh, highlight anything uh, that you, uh, any bills that you had sponsored? Are no, you they, you know, there's not many because I, I really am, uh, think government should be limited. So I'm much more into repealing law than I am into creating new ones on the 11 and a half million Ohioans. Great, great. Um, why don't you touch a little on the issues in your own life that have made you more receptive to informed consent and medical freedom? Wow. Uh, well, of course, with five boys and the first one, he's 18 now, but when we first took him for his MMR, uh, the first shot, he was a vibrant, alive uh, uh, little guy. And uh, not long, I would say within literally an hour or two after receiving that shot, Maybe it was a little more, but um, he just, he became lethargic. His eye movement wasn't as good. Uh, he wasn't making as many baby sounds. And so, of course, that put my wife and I into a tailspin. And um, being a business guy and a factory guy, whenever we have a machine or a problem with something, I always ask one question. What was the last thing you did? Because normally the last thing you did is what's causing this problem. And so I asked myself that very same question. What was the last thing we did? And so we started to look into vaccinations and what these things can do, where they come from, how early they're given in a child's life. And I would say that really set us off because honestly, we were very, hey, this is something you should do. Uh, it's important for the public. But now I realize that um, um, if I don't choose to vaccinate my kid and society has something that breaks out in my area, Everyone else is vaccinated is apparently going to be 100% safe, except for my family. So why does it matter? Um, but generally speaking, when there's risk involved in anything, that really has to be the decision of the person or the parent. Yeah, and we've seen that a lot in the community. And I know you met a lot of people when you were at the event, and I'm sure you've met a lot um, since then. Um, people that have suffered vaccine injuries, and, and it's, it's a real issue in Ohio. It's an issue across the nation, and parental rights are important in, in every avenue, but especially in medical freedom, because, I mean, our bodies are no, I mean, that's the most personal property that we have. We're allowed to defend our personal property, but um, the government has been telling us basically that we can't defend our own property, our own bodies, so that's right. a huge issue. Um, what are the stories that maybe you've heard from some of your constituents or, or people in Ohio that um, have impacted you uh, regarding uh, informed consent and medical freedom? Hmm. Well, that's interesting. I was just actually at one of our fairs in Logan County yesterday, and I had a lady who works for uh, MRDD and, and works with the disabled quite a bit. She's been doing this for, gosh, almost 30 years, I think she said. And she 
you know, this is an informal thing. It's anecdotal. I'm a marketing guy and a research guy and a business guy. But, you know, she too noticed that uh, the kids, uh, it, it seems like these kids all have one thing in common and that they've all been vaccinated. Now, not all of them fall into that camp, but a lot of them who have um, tactile dysfunction and, um, uh, gosh, what else, uh, attention deficit kind of things and uh, maybe autistic kind of a spectrum kind of things. When you're on yeah. those kind of areas, she even told me yesterday, she said, I think, there, I think really somebody ought to study this. But of course, we only study the things that can make money, unfortunately, and nobody's studying not doing something because not doing something doesn't make any money. So <laughs> we want to study doing something, which means, well, we give these shots because they do this, this, and this, or at least think you do. And then there's money to be made, of course, especially if you can mandate that the entire society must. So lots of money in mandates, not just in vaccinations. Oh, that's, that's for sure. We see that across the board. Although vaccines are just kind of exempt from anyone criticizing it. That's, <laughs> well, <laughs> not me. If you have subsidies for something, at least there's somebody that'll criticize it here and there. But with vaccines, unfortunately, holy grail, and not too many people will touch that topic. That's right. Um, do you believe that Ohio legislators realize this is a this is fundamentally about rights defined in the Ohio Constitution, covering conscience and religious freedoms and the right to direct one's medical care? Or do you think they take a peek at that at all? <laughs> um, I'm the wrong guy to ask. My view on what I've seen in government the last three and a half years is what what the government uh, elected officials respond to is how do I keep my skin in office? And the best way to keep my skin in office is do what I'm told. Uh, so that I can get that hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar check, sometimes up to a million dollars, just to protect a single state representative seat. I'm one of the few people who uh, donates a very small amount and uh, doesn't ask for anything in return because then I can do, I can vote exactly the way I think is right and represents my district. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you for that. Other like. Um, do you think there's a medical or other training organizations influencing policy? What's your opinion on that? And do you think it can have good and bad effects? Yeah, un unfortunately, uh, the answer to that question is there are many lobbyists who donate lots of money. And when you have 100, 500 constituents who don't want something, uh, and many of them show up at the state house when big interest, big money is involved and, and people know, hmm, I could get a $10,000 check or $5,000 check from this person or that person, it, it has an influence. And um, I really came in as maybe a bit of a neophyte and thought, well, gosh, we're Republicans, we're conservatives, we want freedom in all these areas, whether it be medical freedom, energy, all sorts of things. And it's just not the case. I mean, the case is these people are gamers and they're trying to climb the ladder I don't care about the next level. I'm trying to do the right thing now. And I think doing the right thing now, God decides what's going to happen later. And I don't worry about that. Yeah. Good for you. I know we, we felt that same way too. You know, we're dealing with uh, 559, um, more than likely written by the AAP from all we can tell since when we're in, we're in testimonies, you know, they're referring to lobbyists for questions regarding the bill. Um, you know, and, and here we go, we show up in droves, we're limited on our time that we can speak, you know, we're, we're gaveled after three minutes when all of the people that went before us on other issues were allowed, you know, 10, 15 minutes. I think one guy even went like 18 minutes. Um, there you go. It's very disheartening, and, and that, and it is a fact that when you have money behind something, it's very, very hard to be heard. Um, and like you said, votes do count, though, so we can get them there at least. We have that one little power that they can't ever take away from us. Yeah. Um, no, I have seen. I have when people show up in enough numbers uh, and do big things, it can change things in government. But it it is a moment. It is a. It takes a big movement, but it can happen. Yeah, it is still possible. Um, you know, and on the same, kind of on the same topic, as citizens were often disheartened to see all of the industry lobbyists every time we go to the state house, and it feels like our actions are insignificant. What would you specifically tell Ohioans they can do to make the best impact on the state house? I mean, other than showing up in numbers, I know that's a biggie. Wow. Uh, well, it, it, yeah, it's how do you make the best influence on government? And I think the, gosh, a number of answers to that would be obviously participation, but it has to start with who are we electing 
And one of the things I've learned is people will say all kinds of things about what they believe in when they're running for office. Don't believe them because I've looked at all their direct mail and their TV ads and their radio ads and their newspaper and their Facebook and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden they get into office and they don't do what they say they were going to do. What I think is important is look at what the person did before they ever decided they were going to run for office. That's where their heart and soul is. That's what they really believe. And unfortunately, what you'll find in many of these cases is, is people haven't done much of anything. Yeah. Don't vote for them. Run someone against them. Run against them yourself. Oh, we've had some, we've had members, they had an open spot. You know what, to heck, I'll just put my name and see what happens. People are so disgusted with the way things are going. A, a mom, a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher, anybody can do just as good a job as any of these people here, if not better. So, you know, make, you know, if you've got true principles and you're willing to stick to them and you don't care if maybe you're just going to be one term, go in and tear it up for a term. See what you can get done, you know, and set an example because I think if people started to see that kind of action from their representatives, it would really, um, it would give them a boost. It would make them feel like there is hope. There is hope for a better future for our kids because right now it, it can be pretty depressing when you turn on the news, um, even when you try to get politically active at all, you feel like kind of like the world is against you and you just, you just want freedom. That's all you want. Just freedom to live your life peacefully uh, with others. And it seems like they're constantly making that difficult for us. We all just want to have a life too. <laughs> we want to, you know, we don't want to have to do political activism our whole life. We'd like to go to the beach and enjoy ourselves once in a while too. Nino, you know, I know you're a busy guy and you need to get going to other meetings and things like that, but I'd like to check with you to see if maybe there was uh, something else you'd like to touch on, other issues that are affecting Ohio that maybe you'd like to uh, bring to our viewers' attention. Well, I, I think a lot of them are the same as medical freedom. I think we need to particularly watch what's going on in schools because I think there's a big link there between what the state and federal government are trying to mandate that our kids have to do not only in their curriculum, but the shots and things that have to go under their skin before they go to school. Um, and there, it may seem odd, but there's a lot of things that show up in these school bills that have a lot to do with what your kids can and can't do uh, and what the state is going to mandate. And it, it really dovetails right into vaccinations and these sorts of things because um, the, I mean, the Ohio Constitution states one bill, one subject, one title. Uh, however, they'll be doing something on school and all of a sudden they'll slip something in that says, we, we, we need to do mandatory vaccinations. We need to do a mandatory curriculum. Well, it all has to do with school, so it's okay. We can put it in there and it's constitutional. And it really doesn't matter because unless someone's willing to spend one to two million dollars to, to challenge a law, it, it goes on the book. So... Keep an eye on the school stuff because that's where a lot of the things that are, affects our kids happens. Yeah, we definitely saw that with 512. Um, and luckily, it looks like that's um, not going to go anywhere. But, I mean, that bill was a, as a nightmare of who knows what. I mean, that they leave so many open ends. The, the wording on a lot of these bills is very ambiguous. They can, they can basically get away with murder later on. Um, and, no, and nobody seems to catch it. So you have to be continually watchdogging anything. I mean, some stuff you wouldn't even think you'd have to look at, but you know, there it is with another little tidbit thrown in, like you said. And, and of course, uh, we're always worried about the end of the year with the budget stuff getting thrown in on the budget. Right. You know, you just have to, you have to constantly, practically have to camp out at the state house to keep track of everything that's going on at any one time. But um, I, I, I so appreciate your time, Nino, being with us today, and I would encourage all of the viewers to please remember to go to the, poll, the polls on November 6th. Remember, informed consent and medical freedom are top issues because, again, if you don't have a right to your own body and your child's body, what right do you have? Um, your vote is power, so remember that. Use your vote. Do not waste it. We encourage you to use our online tools to find candidates that support our important principles in your district and reach out to them with, uh, with any concerns. I know Nino is, is always available to his constituents and even non-constituents for questions and things like that because um, legislation oftentimes affects the entire state. It doesn't just affect the district. So if you have a if you have a representative that says, oh, I, I can't speak to you. You're not in my district. Well, you affect the state. So you should be speaking to anyone about their issues. So don't accept that from a legislator. And Nino, thank you again so much. Uh, have, a, have a great day and thank you for your time.